perspective on this run up we've seen and what does it mean uh, for metals going forward? Well, it's a very good sign uh, for gold, at least. Silver's got work to do still to get itself in the same technical position, if you will, as gold. But I'm trying to remember, Elijah, that last time we spoke was probably back um, in maybe January, right after I wrote this year's annual forecast. And this year's annual forecast kind of echoed last year's, where I said, you know, we're kind of waiting on gold to finally break out. It's been a very well-defined trading range between about 1700 and 2000 Maybe you could expand it $50 each way. But it was really in, in this box going sideways. It's painful to go through that, but it's also beneficial because once you finally break out, from a trading range, the longer it goes on, the more obvious that you have a breakout. And that's what finally happened right at the end of February. Three things uh, combined to send, you know, gold, gee, almost 10% higher, 7% higher, maybe in about seven days. Um, You had that breakout. The breakout was driven by what were perceived to be pretty bullish comments uh, on the day they were made, March the 1st, by one of the Fed goons, Goon Waller. And he put out a speech that said, I'd like to see the Fed do a couple of things, move most of their balance sheet into the short end. Um, That'll drive down lower uh, short rates, which then usually that means once you uninvert the yield curve, that's when the recession begins. And then he also said that gives us some room on the long end to do more asset purchases uh, when we need to. Hey, that's more QE. So back on Friday, the 1st of March, gold shot higher, broke out above the trading range, closed that day at all-time daily highs and weekly highs. You get that breakout. You get this surge of momentum buying. That's what we saw last week. Coincident to all this, a dollar was falling by about a point and a half, and it became this perfect storm of a a breakout. We got all the way to, I think, 2202. Last Friday, so it's it gold is looking stronger. Probably still has a ways to go, um, but that's what has driven gold higher, and it's nice to see it finally happen. Definitely, I think a lot of people have been waiting for this moment here. Um, I know you've said that it's kind of an easy ride up to twenty three hundred once we broke through that uh, twenty one hundred level. So as we look into the rest of the month um, and into the summer, uh, do you expect that twenty three hundred level to be broken? I, I don't know if it'll be broken, but I still I think we'll probably get there. Um, and that was kind of, again, the basis of this year's forecast is we get up there, then kind of probably bang around and wait for some direction. Um, and we'll see what how this year plays out with the Fed and monetary policy. And I mean, the election is looming out there. All the geopolitics are looming out there. Uh, resumption of the banking crisis could be coming. You know, the banks or the Fed opened up that near-term funding facility last March and then just closed it this past Monday. Commercial real estate, all these different things are out there that, you know, who knows how this will all play out. But typically, anything that makes a new all-time high generates a lot of momentum, a lot of press, a lot of people, hey, I want to jump on board. And you kind of overshoot that all-time high, 8%, 10% higher. And that's why I always thought a move about 2,100 price end is to 23. Um, And so that's been my target. The move has come exactly as you would expect. Um, back at the end of February, total open interest, the total amount of contracts for gold on the COMEX was at five-year lows. Basically, nobody cared, right? I mean, it was there was no open interest. There was hard, you know, not much volume, not much going on. As price rallied, it was driven higher. By hot speculator, hedge fund, you know, family office, institutional money wanting to buy gold futures. That's what you got to have. And open interest expanded while price went up 7%. Open interest expanded by 30% from about 410,000 to about 530,000. So all of that new speculator buying is what drove price uh, $120 higher, $140 higher, whatever it was at the end of the day. It will be that re- continued speculator buying that will continue to drive open interest higher that will drive price to 2300 when we get there. But again, with all bull markets in COMEX gold, it's never a straight line up. I mean, uh, what, after that, 
that that high that new the, um, back on March the first. Man, I was sitting there reading my Twitter that weekend. All these people talking about, okay, now gold's going to three thousand. And I'm like, well, okay, eventually, but it's not going there by June. That's not how it works. You kind of goes up and fits and starts two steps forward, one step back. As these specs rush in, momentum dies out, price goes back down, the specs go back out, turns back higher, specs rush back in, make a higher high, and then they get flushed back out. So um, I'm, I'm in the camp of being bullish, but I'm not in this to the moon camp, um, at least not right now. And it's interesting. It seems like it could be a wild ride going forward and not just a straight uh, line up there because we have seen banks increase their short positions in gold and silver recently. And the banks are typically not, they're typically on the right side of this, right? Um, so when we see increased short positions by the banks, it seems like we tend to see a pullback um, coming pretty soon. Uh, we tend to see a pullback thereafter your perspective on the banks increasing their short positions right now yeah that's how it works elijah the, the banks you know make the market uh they are the ones that create the vast majority of the comex contracts and the new open interest as it comes in i mean think about it if if there was a fixed amount of contracts and on a big rally a new rush of interest coming in you had to buy you know you had to find sellers of existing contracts only to meet all that demand you know, you'd have much more volatility. So what happens is you get these, like I said, these these hedge funds, these uh, these uh, institutional accounts, uh, private wealth, all that. They start buying COMEX futures and to kind of dilute that demand and meet that demand, the banks take the short side of that buying and issue a new contract. So that's how you see open interest go up. That's how you see the speculator long position is met by bank short position. You generally a profitable thing for the banks because they know eventually that buying interest is going to run out, right? Uh, everybody that will have bought in the short term has bought. Momentum begins to tip over. Uh, some of that late come money starts to flow back out and price comes back down. That's that two steps forward, one step back. That is typical, you know, typical of a bull market in the COMEX. So, yeah, we'll see again this Friday's COT report will show another extension of the large spec long position, another extension of the bank short position, and then eventually we'll get a pullback and uh, specs will dump longs and the banks will cover shorts and then a new uptrend will begin again, you know, and then, you know, the whole process continues to repeat. Um, that's, that's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And that's why, again, Price won't go to 3000 you know, by Memorial Day. It just doesn't work that way. Um, but it, it will eventually in time in a kind of a stair step pattern like that in a bull market, it'll eventually, you know, do that type of thing. So that's again, that's just how it works. It's just it's the pricing scheme that we're in. And uh, and so if you you know, if you're aware of that and you're you know, if you're trying to trade it, that's information you might want to make sure you keep track of. And can you remind our viewers of your for forecast for silver and has this recent move up to 25 uh, changed anything in your mind? Yeah, you know, think of um, silver in contrast to gold. Um, I wrote a column about this earlier this week. There, I mean, there's two ways you can get rising price. You can get what we've seen in gold, a rush of demand on the long side, right? More buyers than sellers, price goes up. <clears throat> or you can get a short squeeze. And what's a short squeeze? That's where, you know, a whole bunch of people are short and they're getting squeezed as prices are going higher and they're buying back their short. And again, that's buying too. So there's two ways of buying that can drive price higher. Gold has seen this rush of new money come in on the breakout. Silver hasn't broken out yet. And so where gold's open interest has gone up by 30% on a 7% rally, silver's open interest has gone down on an 8% rally, at least through earlier this week. And again, that's speculator short covering driving that rally. So what we'll wait for is just like gold had to break out above 2100 to have this breakout that everyone can see, silver's still in a box. It's been roughly between 22 and 28 for the last three and a half years. So gold breaks out, gets a rush of new money. Silver hasn't broken out yet. In fact, before it gets to 28, it's gotta get through 26. So for now, silver is just kind of 
fiddling around, incrementally moving higher. I moved higher earlier this week because copper was breaking above $4. Um, once silver gets above 26 and then makes a move and gets above 28, that's when you'll see a similar move to what we saw in gold this week. You know, rush of speculator. Oh, look at the clear breakout. But until that happens, it probably kind of can continues to poke along. Higher gold will help drag it higher, drag silver higher, but it's not ready to just like blast forward until it gets.